In this video, I'm gonna quickly show you how to use the Page Speed Insights tool and how to get your score a lot higher. If you're probably struggling right now with a low page score, these three tips are gonna help boost that score into the 80s, the 90s, and you might even score a perfect 100. So this is what I found after doing a couple weeks of trial and error. I finally discovered a couple plugins that go together and I'm gonna show you what I use to get my page score to boost. So I'm gonna use a client website as like a demo website for this. So first off, what PageSpeed Insights is, it's Google's tool that judges your website, how fast it loads, and any issues that come up on the page, it'll let you know things you can fix or improve upon. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm gonna assume you've probably already been trying to fix things and you're struggling to get your page score higher. So to make this a quick video, but also try to explain some things, uh, what we're gonna do first, go to pagespeed.web.dev and you're gonna enter the page URL. So I'm just gonna analyze the home page of a client website. So we always use the HTTPS and we're gonna use elkartliving.com and then I put the slash mark after it. And then we're gonna go ahead and just click analyze. It's gonna start running a test. Now, in the meantime, while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and show you the plugins that you can install. So you're going to go into your WordPress dashboard. You're going to go to plugins. You're going to come here to add new plugin. And then we're going to search the first one called Fast Press. Now, it's spelt with the P-H-A-S-T-P-R-E-S-S. -S. Then we're going to hit enter. So Fast Press, this optimizes your website quickly to get rid of a lot of those errors that you're seeing on the Google page speed test. So we're gonna go ahead and click install. Now I've already installed it, I've just deactivated it for the time being to show you my old page scores before I did these steps. And then right next door to it is the other one we wanna install, WP Meteor. So in my case in WordPress, they show both of them side by side. If they don't in yours, then you can just search both of them separately. WP Meteor is the second one. So I've gone ahead and installed both by clicking on the Install Now button, and then now they're both ready to be activated. So let's go back here to the Page Speed Insights page, and we can see that my page currently scores a 51, which is about half of the 100, 100 being the perfect score. So 51 is not great. It's showing that my first contentful paint was 5.3 seconds. Now, the score we care most about is the largest contentful paint, also called LCP. This is the one that Google is going to consider if you're trying to get higher rankings in the search engine. So this one coming back at 21.2 seconds likely has to do with different images. So we can take a look quickly at that home page. So this website, ElkhartLiving.com, Discover Elkhart. It's an informational site about the city of Elkhart. So it's got a slideshow that flips through different images. As you scroll down, it's got background images in here, more images, more background images. So my guess is that this website had you know, some issues loading some of these images and that caused a really low LCP score. So we got a 51 on mobile. Now mobile is the one you mainly wanna focus on optimizing for. That score is probably the score that's doing worse. Desktop is typically a higher score. So again, it's a little higher here at 66, but mobile is the one that more people are gonna be you know, searching, coming across your website. People are on their phones nowadays. All right, as we scroll down here, we can see kind of what they saw time by time. So as time was going, so it took a while for the page to actually load. Then you can click on the opportunities of what things you can do to improve your speed score. So a lot of these are gonna get taken care of with the following plugins that I'm about to show you, like render blocking, properly sizing images, reducing unused CSS, those sorts of things. So let's go back first and, and play around with these plugins now. So as we head back into the dashboard, I'm gonna go ahead and click on activate fast press and then we'll activate WP Meteor by scrolling down and finding it and we'll activate that as well. All right, so let's go ahead also and do one more plugin. So you'll go back to the add new plugins. You'll search this one called Code Snippets. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate that one as well. So it's a third plugin you're gonna need here. Now this one is how we get rid of unused CSS, which is one of the things that it mentioned in my report here, reduce unused CSS. So we're gonna use Code Snippets and I'm gonna show you that one last. All right, so let's first start optimizing with the fast press plugin. So we're gonna click on settings here, or we can find it over here in our settings toolbar. We can find fast press and WP Meteor hiding under the settings tab here. So let's go ahead into settings. 
and you're gonna see a bunch of different tabs that we can check on and off. So the first one under plugin, we wanna leave as is. By default, it should be zigzagging back and forth. So you've got on, off, on, off, on. Then we get down to images and all three of these are gonna be turned on. I'm actually turning off lazy load images. So I switch that to off. Then I'm gonna go under the HTML, CSS, JavaScript one and we're gonna see all of these turned on as well. And I actually turned off this one here for loading scripts. All right, so with doing these settings, I found this to work best for getting a fast website and higher page score in Google. So that's it for that plugin. You can replay this, pay, this part of the video if you need to see, again, which ones of these, how to set them in your settings. Going on to WP Meteor, this one's real simple. This by default is gonna be all the way over here at zero LCP optimization only. We're gonna go ahead and just drag it all the way to the right so it says delay until first interaction and we're gonna click save changes. All right, and then our third plugin, the code snippets plugin, we're gonna to go to add new to add a new snippet. Now I've already added it. So what I've done is titled it removed unused CSS. So again, if I was doing it brand new from scratch, I would just click add new you're gonna to come to a blank page like this where you can give it a title. So you can type in removed unused CSS. And then you're gonna copy paste in a code, which I'll link to a web page on my website that'll have that code for you to grab. You're gonna copy paste that in there. So let's go back and look at the actual code itself to show you. So I've already given it the name remove unused CSS up here in the title. And then I've gone here, clicked into line one, just hit control V to go ahead and paste in that code that I copied. And what it does is it puts in some code that'll automatically remove unused CSS to help your website load faster. So again, that will get rid of the one error that we were getting over there on the Google page speed. All right, so now that I've updated those plugins and added the code snippet to my website, the only other thing that I have that you may be different is your catching plugin. So FastPress, WP Meteor are not catching plugins. I still have the SiteGround Speed Optimizer plugin that comes with SiteGround website hosting. If you wanna learn more about SiteGround, I'll link to them in the description below as well. But SiteGround's a pretty reliable host. They're pretty fast uh, and they come with their own plugin here. Now what I've done here, if we go into these settings just to show you, I've actually turned off all of their optimization settings. I'm using those other optimization plugins instead. For example, the, the fast press had all the JavaScript, the CSS, that code settings. That's a lot what SiteGround would do, but I've turned all these off. So all I'm using SiteGrounds for is catching. So if we go into catching, again, you can see that I've got the dynamic catching turned on right now. All right, so if I go into like the front end, that's where we're gonna find the HTML, the CSS, you know, all these different tabs here that we can go back and forth. So if I wanted to use their plugin for optimizing, which I have tested it and it doesn't work very well, I'm still getting slower website load times. I'm still getting bad page scores on Google. So again, I shut all of these off. That way they're not interfering with the other plugins that I just installed. Because if they do the same thing, you don't want to have two plugins running that are doing the exact same thing. So I made sure all these are turned off first before I ran those other plugins. The only thing I did turn on here under SiteGround was web font optimization just to test that out, but I don't think it had a whole lot of effect for me. All right, so just using this as a catching plugin, again, as you look at other catching plugins under plugins, go to add new plugin. You can just type in, you know, catch, and you can find all kinds of different speed plugins that you could install. Lightspeed catch is a good one. W3 catch is a good one. Uh, we've also got there's one with like a Jaguar here, WP Fastest Catch, that's a good one. You can see they've got over a million active installs. So you can install a separate catching plugin to use for you know, the catching portion of your website. All right, so I've installed those two plugins. I've got a catching plugin. I've added some code using code snippets. So after doing those exact steps, you can see before we did any of that, I was scoring a 51. So now let's go ahead and retest it and see what it will spit back to us this time. Now again, you don't wanna run this test too close together because it sometimes takes a little while for Google to understand that you made updates to your page. So it might keep spitting back the same score to you each time. Now in this case, it's been probably five minutes since we last ran the test. So that should have been enough time for it to update. And we can see here it's now updated to an 84. All right, so that's getting better. We can go over to desktop and we can see our desktop scores now jumped up to 91. 
So that's a big improvement. We can see our LCP is down to one and a half seconds. And we can go back to mobile and see our LCP there is still at 3.3. Now again, if I ran this over in like GT metrics, so we can just type in gtmetrics.com, they will actually show you like how big your web page is in terms of how much stuff there is to load. So with all those images that I've got here on this home page, the slideshows, you know, big background images, I haven't gone in and actually optimized these images yet. So there's still some more speed I could probably cut down by just going here and optimizing all of these different images. All right, so if we go back here again, GT metrics is a second tool you can use to analyze your speed. Now this one usually scores me even better than the page score. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to get a hundred here. So we got 100% on structure, 86 on performance, LCP they're calling at 1.7. I believe this just tests the desktop version. It's not testing mobile. So you can compare kind of this version versus the desktop version of Google Page Speed Insights. But again, just doing those tweaks, getting those plugins installed, adding that code snippet, I've drastically increased my performance here up to a 91. And if we wanted to test not just my home page since my home page has you know specific content but it, let's just say i want to send someone to another page on my website elkartliving.com slash rent restaurants we can go ahead and run the score there and then i can come over here and do the same so we can go back out to the home page and i'm just going to type that back in so elkartliving.com slash restaurants and we'll let that test run so let's go back to google and see what kind of score they come up with so they're still coming up with an 83 there for mobile. Although now desktop here, they're scoring this page at a 98. All right, so that's a lot better from where we started. So what we can do is go down here again and look at what they're advising us to continue working on. So avoid chaining critical requests. So again, here's some font issues. So if I clean up my fonts a little bit, that could help speed the page up more. All right, so one thing you could do for that is you can sometimes swap your fonts. Uh, so if we go here into our dashboard settings, I actually use a plugin called Elementor. So that's where I'm getting all of my fonts from. So if I go into the settings of Elementor, I go to advanced under the tab here. We can scroll down here and find where we have Google fonts enabled. Google fonts load is set to default. So I'm actually going to turn this to swap and I'm going to hit save changes. And that should help take care of some of those font issues. So what it does is when your page loads, if those fonts are taking a little while to load, it'll swap them out and it'll load some temporary fonts for the web page until those other ones can fully load in. So that'll help kind of avoid some of that render blocking and some of that speed delay caused by the fonts. All right, so now that we've been able to just install some plugins, add some code snippet and achieve a 98 score, to go ahead and continue further optimizing to try to get it to 100, I'm gonna guess I need to optimize some of these images further. So if I go into GT metrics, I scroll down here to page details. They're going to show me that my page size is 1.78 megabytes. Now that's a pretty big page size. I want to try to get that under one if I can. So I've got some room to cut down the page size here. If I can cut that in half, that page will load much faster. Now a big part of that page size is all attributed pretty much to images. That makes up 1.54 out of that 1.78. So again, images are what bulk up your pages and make your website load slower. So that's our final tip in this video. Make sure you're optimizing your images. So one tool that I like to use a lot is the bulk resize photos.com tool. And you can go here to this tool. You can click on choose images and we'll see if I have one I can do for example on my website here. So this one, how often to practice golf is 174 kilobytes. So we'll go ahead and click into it. So by default, just a basic image like that had 174 kilobytes. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna compress this image down into a smaller file size. So you can either scale it at 100% of its original size and then it'll automatically compress it. But in this case, I know that that image is already bigger than what I need. It's a 1300 by 900 image. I don't need it to be 1300 pixels. It can go down to like 900 pixels and be okay still to show on the screen and in good clarity. So I'm actually just gonna bump this down to 80% of the original dimensions. So it's gonna change the dimensions of that image. And then we're gonna go ahead and change image format. This is a big one. You wanna put your images on your website these days in WebP format. That's gonna serve smaller file sizes and help speed your website up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click start. 
and you can see it's cut my 175 kilobyte image down to just 15 kilobytes without hurting the quality. So I can upload that image to my website. And that's what I would do here as I get ready to after this video. I'm gonna go back out here to my home page, which was loading in 3.3 seconds. And I'm gonna to try to figure out how to optimize each and every one of these images so that I can get their file sizes reduced, get that whole page size reduced down to a lot smaller. And that's gonna help my website get even faster by not taking so much time trying to load images. And that should eventually turn my page score here on Google up closer in the high 90s to 100 on the mobile score. All right, so try these tips out. I guarantee if you install those two plugins and you do that code snippet, you should see a big improvement in your Google page score and you should see that your website's loading much faster. And just manually going out onto your website on your phone, testing it on your phone, you're gonna notice it loads much faster. Even if you don't quite see you know, the score showing the quickest time, when you do it mobily on your phone, it's going to be a lot faster than what, you know, what the data is really showing here. But this is kind of what matters to Google. So it's also important to optimize it for these numbers on, on the PageSpeed Insights tool. All right. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. And uh, hopefully this helps some of you save you guys lots of hours of trying to figure out what to do to boost your WordPress website speed.